Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. So I found this at Walmart just the other day. Yes, this is one of those watch channels where we talk about watches you can buy at Walmart. <laughs> so yeah, this one was $19.92 at my local Walmart store. This is the AE1500 from Casio. There are a lot of things to like about this watch so much so that when I saw this one at another Walmart, I went ahead and bought it too. So same exact thing except for, uh, you know, different colors on the watch band and, um, uh, you know, the bezel there. And also this one has kind of a little bit of an orange yellow sort of tint on the LCD that this, uh, you know, monochrome, mostly monochrome one doesn't have. So, you know, you get those there. There's one other variation of this that I'm aware of, and it looks a lot like this, except it has the negative LCD or the reverse LCD. And so I decided not to get that one. Plus it wasn't just sitting on the shelf at my local Walmart anyway. Here's just a little example of what the uh, reverse LCD would look like, you know, compared to a normal LCD on these G-Shock squares. So I find that the reverse LCD or the negative LCD doesn't, it's, it's just to me, it's a little bit harder to see at a glance. So generally I, I don't get into the reverse LCD very much. And that's kind of why I avoided it on uh, this new watch. But the main thing to keep in mind with these is, uh, you know, you're going to find them if you shop around carefully for about $20 at the low end and somewhere up near $25 at the high end right now. So somewhere in that range. And it's a great deal for for that price. And uh, well, what's not to like? Let's uh, let's just zero in on this guy and let me go over the functions and features. First of all, of course, you're looking at a very large display, uh, you know, compared to some of these other watches. Let's just say this G-Shock Square there, you can see the difference in the size of the digits, right? So a much bigger, much bigger digits there, meaning that this one is going to be a great watch for someone that maybe has some uh, visual problems, you know, some sight, eyesight problems. Nice, big, clear digits there. The face, look at that, just all the information you need right there. Day of the week. The uh, month and date, of course, there's the time, and that can be in the 12-hour uh, or a 24-hour display. Just the tap of that start button will will change that for you. And seconds right there. And then these little boxes uh, appearing and disappearing every second. Just a little bit of animation to kind of go with the seconds display there. And, uh, you know, just nice, nice, big, clear display. Of course, it has a 10-year battery. That's a lithium CR2032 battery. Very common battery. You're going to find that battery in uh, garage door openers. So really no problem getting another battery. And 10 years before you even need to worry about that battery anyway, it's pretty good. Um, also 100 meter water resistance. So um, I take that at face value when Casio says 100 meter water resistance. I believe them that it's 100 meter water resistance. I know there's controversy out there, people claiming that uh, 100 meter water resistance isn't really that great. But uh, with Casio, I think I think it really is. And uh, just just to make a little comparison here. Now, here's a nice big Gravity Master watch, and you can see how big the face is by comparison. And um, so you got those nice big digits there. Another big uh, watch here, a Range Man. And again, you can see it's one of the larger watches. There's a size comparison there, how they look, and you can see the digits are much larger on that one. And here's the the G-Shock King. <laughs> that a lot of people like. I like it too. But as you can see, even though it's a nice, big, sturdy watch that could probably survive just about any disaster you can throw at it, uh, the digits there aren't are not very large when you think of it compared to this one. So again, really a great watch, a great value here. I'll just switch over to this one so you can see the color difference there. And again, it's got the uh, the watch band with a plastic clasp there, and you can see you know that nice kind of khaki desert color on the bezel and the band. So that's how that looks. So what about the functions and features here? Besides this main screen here, if I press the mode button, we get into the alarm mode. And here you can have the hourly chime on or off. And uh, what do I do here? I just tap the adjust button to turn that on and off. And the bell indicates 
that that hourly chime is either set to go or it isn't. Then if I push the start button, then I can look at the different alarms. And right now that's still in default uh, mode. All the alarms are set to uh, 12 o'clock. So what I do here, I've got five available alarms. And the first one has the option of being either kind of a standard alarm or a snooze alarm that repeats every five minutes uh, for up to half an hour after the initial setting. So if I were to set this alarm, say to, you know, like six o'clock, I just advance it down here. There's this, this button up here does not reverse that. So, you know, that's one thing that sometimes is frustrating that when you're uh, doing the settings here, you can only advance and that's not so bad with the hours, but if you're trying to advance minutes and you go one too many and you got to go all the way around again, to advance those minutes. But, um, you know, other than that, it's very, very similar to a lot of watches you would use. Now, when it stops blinking, um, I can tap the adjust button to make it stop blinking. Then this is where I can also tap the adjust button to activate the snooze feature or to turn off the alarm. So that little indicator there, alarm one, that indicates now that it's set to go that indicates that it's uh, the snooze function is, is set to go on that one alarm and that indicating that it's off. Now, if I have that on and then I go back to my, um, you know, my timekeeping screen or in any, any of these other modes, it will keep a little reminder there telling me that alarm one is set to go. So it's kind of nice to have that there. Another thing you can do while things are blinking is uh, if I press the mode button here, I can set um, set the alarm to specific days or a specific month. So let's just try that. Right now it's just flashing all dashes, which means it's going to go every day as long as that, that, that little icon is on. But if I press the start button there, I can uh, choose a month. So let's say it's June. So if I do it this way, then every day in June, that alarm is going to go. Or right here, I can choose a specific day in June, like say, you know, June, what, 21st, let's say, or 22nd, <laughs> right there, the, the beginning of summer. So it's only going to go on that day. Or if I uh, go back here and change this to just a dash for a uh, for the month. So I'm not specifying a month here. This means this alarm will go on the 22nd day of each month only, you know, only that day. So you've got your, your ability to customize that. And so if you, if you want to get in there and, uh, you know, adjust that often, you could make a different, uh, alarm for five different days of the week if you wanted to. And just every week you could update the date on that. So that's, that's something you can do. And then of course there are the other alarms, so I can go here and uh, select another one and set that to whatever I want it to be. And so now if I've got more than one alarm active there, you can see that now it shows me there are two alarms ready to go. Also, as long as I'm in this mode here, what you can do is I can hold down the start button and it actually will give me, it's kind of a, a demonstration of what the alarm sounds like. So, you know, if you want to do that, I, I usually neglect to show that, but that is something that's uh, available on a lot of these Casio watches, just a, a demonstration of the alarm by holding down a button while it's in alarm mode. Now, my next mode is a countdown timer mode, and I can select any number of hours and minutes for my countdown, uh, you know, from one minute all the way up to a full 24 hours. If I set it to all zeros, that's a true 24 hour countdown timer. The other thing I can do is... Um, while, while things are blinking there, if I push the light button right there, it's a, it's, it's a RPT, which means auto repeat. So you have the option of, if it's on auto repeat, then, uh, you know, this thing is going to count down 30 minutes. And when it's done with the 30 minutes, it will just start over again by itself. Keep counting down 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and, and beep at the end of each of those 30 minute intervals or whatever the interval I've chosen. So you can have that auto repeat active or if I stop the uh, alarm there and get it to blink again, and then I press the light button, then uh, auto repeat is deactivated. So yeah, it's kind of nice to have the option there uh, rather than be forced to always be on auto repeat or or never have auto repeat. Okay, then a stopwatch, and this is uh, again pretty similar to the stopwatches you would see on a lot of digital watches. Right here, this little animation of these boxes uh, advances or, you know, <laughs> box appears or disappears every tenth of a second to coincide with the, the with the running stopwatch there. Of course, if I tap the adjust button, then I've got my split time. If I stop it, 
then it shows me my stopped time. And if I uh, tap that adjust button again, it resets to zero and ready to go. A 24 hour stopwatch. If you don't stop it, it'll go to uh, 24 hours and then just reset to zero and keep on going indefinitely. Every 24 hours, it'll just reset to zero and keep going. Uh, then you got the dual time mode. So for this one, uh, you could look up and, and see, you know, what's the time zone, what's the time in a different time zone, and you could just manually set that as you please, or you don't even have to make, make it be a specific time zone. Right now, I've got it set to UTC, but what, I, what if I want it to be, uh, you know, UTC plus three minutes. I can do that. So you can set that to whatever you want uh, for the hours and minutes. The seconds will always uh, match up with whatever the seconds uh, setting is for your main timekeeping on this watch. And there you go. Back, back, to, uh, back to home, if you will. Now, when you're first setting this watch, uh, you know, here, here you are on your main uh, timekeeping screen. You can hold the adjust button until things start to blink. This is where you can reset seconds, set the hours, minutes, the uh, year, month and date. And so those are all the settings for right there on your main timekeeping. Now, if you want to change it to 24 hour mode, you tap that right there and that affects the, the dual time as well. Now that's going to be in 24 hour mode or tap that start button there and it goes back to 12 hour mode. And again, that affects the dual time as well in a 12 hour mode. Now, uh, the, the thing about this, let me just manually set this to, uh, you know, like Let's do 3 a.m. and see how that looks. Okay, so there's no indicator at 3 a.m. that it's a.m. There's only a, an indicator for p.m. And if I tap this button down here, now there's no indicator that I just changed it to 24-hour mode, unless maybe I go over here and, and confirm, yeah, it's in 24-hour mode now, and now it's not. See, there's just nothing telling you there. But, uh, you know, you'll figure that out. And... It's not that bad. Uh, you know, with some of my older Casio watches, it was easier to inadvertently tap the button that would uh, switch it from 12 hour to 24 hour mode. With this, you know, the button's a little more protected and a little bit stiff. Uh, you're probably not gonna hit that by mistake and change modes when you don't want to. But, uh, you know, the, just a little a word there on the mode. Now with both versions of this watch that I have here, you've got, uh, you know, a, a nice sturdy, watch band. It actually feels feels really good. Feels like that's made to last. A stamped watch back, uh, the back of the case there, stamped metal held down by these four tiny screws. So relatively easy to get in there and change the battery once every 10 years when it's time to change that battery. But you can see uh, these watches are both the same as far as that goes and pretty straightforward. The crystal on these watches is made of a, you know, resin material. So it's not the most uh, strong stuff out there. It's, it's not bad though. And uh, you do have some protection here where the bezel sticks up uh, ahead of the crystal. So probably you're not going to scratch that up too badly, but because it's that soft material, that, uh, that, you know, just resin material there actually makes it very easy to repair this. If you have that poly watch stuff that you can just, uh, put the little paste on there and, and, and buff that out. And you can usually restore a crystal to pretty good shape with poly watch. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And also, you know, come on, it's a $20 watch, maybe $25 if you didn't shop carefully enough. But for $20 or $25 or somewhere within that range, a great value. I wouldn't complain about anything really <laughs> with this watch. It's said to be accurate to within 30 seconds a month, but uh, my, my experience recently with Casio watches, when they say it's accurate to 30 seconds a month, it's more like 10 seconds a month or better. So, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of these watches turns out to be accurate to within like, you know, three seconds a month or something incredible like that. It, it has happened before. So, uh, yeah, again, I would not be surprised. The backlight on these watches uh, stays on for about a second and a half. So there's no way to adjust that. And if I hold the button down, that doesn't seem to change it either. Either, But, you know, so take a look, a second and a half. So there's just a couple of LEDs, the kind of amber color down here. Uh, the, the bottom on uh, kind of the, you know, five o'clock and eight o'clock position, somewhere in there. And so that's what you're going to see for the backlight. And actually, you know, that... This isn't maybe exactly what it looks like to my eyes. The camera doesn't quite see it exactly like my eyes do, but I find that this is a really nice little backlight. Uh, yeah, I would have liked it to, to stay on just a little bit longer, but uh, what can you do? It's, it's a 10-year battery, and so I'm sure 
the short duration backlight is part of what helps that battery last so long. But hey, you know, if this battery only lasts eight years <laughs> and I have to change a battery uh, eight years from now in either one of these watches or both of them, I I'm probably not going to be too upset about it. It's an incredible value. Okay, let's just see how much this weighs, uh, comes in at, okay, 60 grams. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's a little bit substantial. Compare that to, say, like one of these G-Shock squares, that's uh, only 50 grams. But, you know, that, that's, that's pretty good. You know, it's, it's fairly comfortable. I actually expected it to weigh in a little bit less than that. But uh, I would say wearing it, it just kind of, it's a good, it's a good weight for its size, and I, I really don't think it's uncomfortable or feels at all heavy. It's just, it's just good, a good balance. And really, that's about all I can say about this. I will do some accuracy tests over the next few weeks and uh, maybe get back with you as far as just how accurate is it really compared to that 30 seconds per month accuracy that it's supposed to uh, be. I think it'll do very, very well. And uh, until then, I hope you will join me for more episodes of The Good Timekeeping Show.